Hey, what's up, guys? Gons here for the Face Like the Sun YouTube channel. I wanted to just respond to all the stuff that happened yesterday, July 8th. Of course, we had United Airlines grounded because of a computer glitch. We also had the New York Stock Exchange go offline because of a computer glitch. We just saw China with an economic crash. We've seen in recent weeks Greece have an economic crash. All the stuff in the news about the IMF potentially announcing a new world currency in September, or more specifically, I've heard October 20th. A lot of fear-mongering going on. Now, I want to bring sort of a different angle to this because the videos I've watched, the articles I've read, it's all doom and gloom. The new world order is here. Everybody is kind of freaking out. You have a lot of conspiracy theorists saying, I told you so, and everything else. But I want to bring a little bit of rationale to this. Now, first off, what I want to say is that a lot of Americans tend to equate the end of America or the fall of America as synonymous with the end of the age or, you know, Bible prophecy fulfilling the return of Jesus Christ, all that stuff. And I just want to say, be careful with that. Don't let your nationalism obscure end times prophecy and your understanding of it. A lot of end times prophecy is centered around Israel, which, by the way, the Temple Institute is about to announce something on the 12th. I don't know what it is. I'll report on it when it comes out. A lot of people are speculating that perhaps it's the announcement of the rebuilding of the third temple. It could be. There's a lot of turmoil surrounding the Temple Mount and the Jews being barred from the Temple Mount until the end of Ramadan and things like that. So there's a lot going on in the world and seemingly everything is going to hell in a handbasket. So again, I just want to state, number one, that biblical prophecy has some very specific things that must be fulfilled. And while we are seeing a lot of chaos and turmoil around the world, be careful when you say that this thing is exactly what was prophesied, because I think history tends to have sort of a cyclic nature. And if you study biblical prophecy, the ones that were fulfilled, for example, a lot of the Old Testament prophecies that were fulfilled in the New Testament, you'd see that there is no clear way to decipher how things will be fulfilled. There are good indications, but it was only through the Spirit of God that people were able to know this was what was prophesied. And looking at the biblical pattern and example of how prophecy is fulfilled, I think it's really important for us to understand and to implement into our own current model of how we might see things fulfilled. In other words, what I'm saying is that the way things are fulfilled may not exactly be how we think. And that's why when I talk about stuff on this channel, I've never said this is the fulfillment of this. I always say it could be, it's possible. And I always suggest that perhaps whatever I'm talking about is a clog in the wheel, so to speak. It's not the actual event or whatever that's going to fulfill something. It's part of the steps towards the fulfillment. And I've seen plenty of people use one or two Bible verses or just one idea from Scripture that is a prophecy and try to fit it into whatever's going on in the world. And we have to be very careful with that because unless we have a very clear, deep understanding of what the Bible actually says is going to happen, then we can be deceived into thinking that whatever is going on is the actual fulfillment. And I say that because, look, in the Bible, the Pharisees and all these guys— they were well-versed in the Torah or the Pentateuch, uh, the written prophecies by the prophets and the general writings. They were very familiar with all that, yet they didn't know that the Messiah had come. And think about that. Consider that into your thinking of how prophecy might be fulfilled. Because even the most studied people at that time were blind to the actual fulfillment of the coming of the Messiah. And I'm not saying that that's going to happen again. I'm just telling you to be cautious about people who take one verse or a couple verses and try to fit it into a whole paradigm of this is the fulfillment of this. And again, I say that in light of all this economic stuff going on and the warnings of September and all, all the stuff that you see, all the fear mongering that's happening surrounding the world of conspiracy, the world of truthers, especially those Christians out there doing it. And look, we can't even come to an agreement. A lot of people that study Bible prophecy have different views of how things are going to play out. And, you know, the perfect example of that is the rapture debate. But what I think is important is for us to educate ourselves into all the possibilities of how things will be fulfilled and to consider all the things that are happening in the world and not pin it down to 
yes, this is the fulfillment or not. That's not really important. I think it's important to consider all possibilities because we don't know how it's going to play out. But if we have a good palette of information, of possible scenarios, if we've thought things through from different angles, people that disagree with you, people that agree with you, people that have crazy ideas, consider all those aspects because when stuff starts happening, when stuff goes down, we will know. And the Spirit of God is going to tell us, this is it right here. And I think in the church, the body of Christ, when stuff really happens, the Holy Spirit is going to speak truth into the church. And we collectively, as Christians, will know that the fulfillment is happening, just like they did in the book of Acts. We will know collectively this is the fulfillment of what we've been looking at and what we've been talking about. And all the stuff we talk about on this channel and everything else, there's steps towards that. There are clogs in the wheel. And things that occur can have partial fulfillment. It could be a shadow fulfillment. In other words, it could be sort of a type of fulfillment, not an exact fulfillment, but sort of a, a foreshadowing type of effect. So a lot is going on. I get it. It's crazy. But don't freak out. I'm seeing a lot of people freak out. And I'm just here to say that number one, there's not much to worry about, okay? Because the most important thing to prepare for is spiritually. Yes, you know, you should probably stock up a little bit on food and water. I'm not one of these guys that says, you know, go get gold and silver and stuff. Although it's probably a decent idea if you have the resources to do that. I'm not an expert in that area. So, you know, you can go to other places and people that have much more knowledge than I do about those topics. So don't take my word for it. All I'm saying is that my call and my message with everything I do on this YouTube channel and just everything I've been trying to do for a few years now is not to tell everybody doom and gloom, but to say, prepare spiritually. That is the main key here. Where is your spirit? Because ultimately, if the FEMA camps open up, if Jade Helm is actually a foreshadowing of some sort of martial law, if there's some kind of domestic attack, what are you going to do about it? How are you going to respond? And that's really the key here. And, you know, it's not an easy thing to really figure out because, you know, if your family's in danger, if someone comes to your door and they're trying to take your wife and kids or, you know, do something against your will, do you fight it or do you just lay down? And man, that's a tough question. I mean, me personally, I would try to defend my family, you know, from physical harm and stuff like that. But ultimately, it's a spiritual war. All of the physical manifestations of everything happening starts in the spiritual. And if we don't see the spiritual effect around the world, then we're not going to understand the physical and we're going to end up freaking out over all the physical things happening. And what I'm telling you is the rise of the spiritual darkness is rampant and it has been for a long time. Now, throughout history, spiritual darkness has always been there. The Bible tells us that the spirit of Antichrist is already out in the world doing its work. So there's no surprise that this kind of stuff should be happening. And no doubt there is a lot of stuff going on and we live in some very tumultuous times. And the reason why I focus on the topic of transhumanism a lot on this channel and in my ministry is because that's the one thing that differentiates between the time we're living in today and most of known history. Most of known history have not been privy to the sciences and the technologies that can provide certain effects, such as the quest for immortality and apotheosis. Now, these are things that have been sought after by the elite and the occult and those in the know for a very long time. The arcane knowledge that's been a part of the occult tradition has always been to achieve apotheosis, to restore humanity to the point of the garden. And the times we're living in now with the technological tools is what can really make this fulfillment happen. And that's what Age of Deceit 2 was about, alchemy and the rise of the beast image. I document that and I show how this arcane knowledge and the promise from Lucifer, the same promise that was told by the Nakash, the shining one, the serpent in the Garden of Eden to Eve, is the same promise that's been perpetrated and given to mankind through technology. So that's without a doubt happening. And, and that's why I think a lot of us are seeing all this crazy stuff happen. Now, let me bring it back down here. This is just a rant. I, I don't have a specific thing I want to point out here in this 
video today, but I know somebody who works at an administration level in the military and they are privy to all the stuff going on with Jade Helm and everything else. And this person sent me a message about Jade Helm and this person was in another part of California and asked the station in this other part of California if they were partaking in Jade Helm and they said no, but they didn't deny that it wasn't happening. And then the reason for not participating was that the group, this particular military group, had too much going on in other countries and stated, quote, lots of teams coming and going. And he said that they're from all different countries and it wasn't Iraq or Afghanistan. So there's definitely a global incentive behind this Jade Helm thing as part of it for the domestic arm of whatever is going on. But generally speaking, the New World Order and this One World Government is prophesied to happen, you know, and we don't know exactly what it's going to look like, but we know that there's going to be a one world economic system tied to that, a one world religious system. And of course, technology can really create that singular system worldwide. It already has for the most part with the internet and tied to the internet. We've talked about CERN a lot on this channel, gateways and portals being open to other dimensions, potential entities coming through. I mean, it gets really crazy and wild. But again, the important thing here is how do we fight this really? How do we really fight this? Is it with guns? Is it with swords and knives? Not really. I think it's with the spiritual weapons that we have. And I'm not just talking about rebuking people all over the place. That's another thing that I've seen from a lot of Christians is that they'll sit there and they'll just start rebuking everybody. I rebuke you. I rebuke you for all the stuff that's going on. I rebuke you. I rebuke you. But what's that really doing? It's not really helping the situation here. What does 1 Peter 4, 7 say? It says, the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. Be sober. Be watchful, be prayerful. Those are the three key things here. Sober-minded, be watchful, self-controlled, be in prayer. That's really where our weaponry is at. So I kind of went all over the place here. I don't want to take too much of your time because I know there's other videos out there that are warning about certain things. September, you know, everyone's telling me, do a video about September. I'll put something together, but let me tell you right now, I'm not in the business of date setting. I see all the predictions. I see all the quote-unquote synchronicities that are seemingly amounting to something in September. Again, the rumors that perhaps the IMF are going to usher in a new world currency in October, the rumors about the Pope announcing a new world order at the UN meeting in September. Maybe all that stuff will happen. Maybe it won't. But listen, don't freak out over it. There's a lot of people freaking out, and I'm saying don't freak out. Let's take this, be sober-minded, God's in control. Yes, wake up your neighbor. Wake up your friends and family who are blind to this stuff, but do it in a way that is in love. Do it in a way that is in prayer. Do it in a way that's not going to cause panic, fear, anxiety, because that's what I see happening in the community of truthers, Christian truthers, conspiracy theorists, all this stuff. A lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, and that's not going to help anybody, guys. That's really not helping the situation. That plays right into the hands of the enemy. I think that causes us to say and do things that are only helping to build the system. So if we're going to really fight the system, we have to go contrary to that. And it's going to come at telling the truth. And there's only one real truth that is important. That's the gospel message of Jesus Christ. And some people are going to be turned off when I say that. I know not all of you watching or listening are Christians, but let me just tell you now, there's power in Jesus Christ, and there is power that you have spiritually in the name of Jesus Christ. And you have to be saved. You have to believe in faith that he rose from the dead. But guess what? When he did that, he defeated death, ladies and gentlemen. All the technologies talking about wanting to defeat death, wanting to become immortal, well, Jesus did that on the cross 2,000 years ago. So what all this is leading to, I think, is the Antichrist beast system. But again, we don't know. If anyone tells you they know that the end is happening in 2020 or 25 or whatever, they may be lying to you. They may be under a false spirit. And I tell you why. Because we don't know how God's going to play this out. And my theory on this is that we play a role in the unfolding of Bible prophecy. 
Now, here's my logic behind this. One, God desires all to come to the knowledge and truth of Jesus Christ. This is biblical. But we are also told to be salt and light into the world. Our job is the Great Commission. It's to spread the gospel to the ends of the earth. Jesus never told us to fight the New World Order with the sword or whatever. That's not what he preached. He said spread the gospel because that's what's going to save us. Here's the key, guys. The New World Order system, the enslavement program, is not for your physical body. It's not so they can throw you into camps. Yeah, that might be part of it. But ultimately what's going on is Satan is trying to steal your soul. He's trying to take your soul to hell with him. Here's the deal. Hell was not made for mankind. It was made for Satan and his fallen angels. And he wants to take with him. He knows he's going there. And he wants to take with him as many human souls as he can. And the New World Order system is the final commencement push for Satan to gather as many souls as he can to take down with them to hell. And we don't know how long Jesus is going to allow us to preach the gospel before the end comes. Because, look, once the New World Order is established, it could be a hundred years before we see everything fulfilled. Now, some of you might say, oh, how can you say that? Look at look around. Look at all the stuff happening. But we don't know that. Think about it. Jesus said, as in the days of Noah. How long did Noah live? Several hundred years, okay? He lived for, what, 600 years before the flood and 300 years after? This is a long period of time, and we're just entering into the age of genetic modification and all this stuff that seems to reflect what was going on in Genesis 6. So, again, it could be a longer time period than we think. Now, again, yes, things are happening quickly. The mark of the beast system can be employed tomorrow. Sure, I'm not denying that fact. We're supposed to stay vigilant. We're supposed to stay watchful and aware of these things. But if you are feeling fear, if you are feeling anxiety, if you are a prepper and doing it because you're afraid, then you're operating under the spirit of fear, which is not of God. So that's what I wanted to rant about. Again, I just went all over the place. I just wanted to have a little stream of consciousness because there's a lot going on, but I wanted to give an overview perspective from the biblical worldview because what you're going to hear on a lot of channels is just, it's happening, it's happening, it's happening, fear, 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 fear. And, you know, even the Christians, and, you know, I'm not trying to judge anybody. I understand some of you might say, oh, you hypocrite. You know, you tell people all the time that the end is near and all this stuff. And that's true to a degree. I don't set dates. I don't necessarily say the end is coming for sure tomorrow. That's not the message I want to send. I want to encourage you guys. To first off, if you're not a believer in Jesus Christ, to look into the situation because it's about your soul, okay? Here's the deal. We are all eternal beings. It's just a matter of where we're going to spend eternity. Is it going to be in heaven or is it going to be in hell? And, you know, I read a comment the other day from somebody on YouTube. There is no hell. There is no heaven. All the Bible stuff that you talk about are aliens. And, uh, you know, everyone has their opinion on stuff. But here's my opinion. And you could heed to the warning or you don't have to. That's your choice. You have a choice in this matter. You have the free will to operate the God-given right to choose what you do with your own life and what you do with your soul. So again, all I'm saying is consider your spiritual life, consider your soul and the soul of others, because what's going on behind all this economic stuff and the computer stuff and the transhumanism is the enemy, the one that's bound to hell already. He knows he's going there, trying to deceive the world and take as many human souls with him as possible. So don't fall for that deception. That's the ultimate deception of Satan. And we have the power in us to fight that spiritual battle in the name of Jesus Christ. And also, we have the power and ability and free will to choose what to do with this information that we're all getting about all this crazy stuff going on in the world. So again, I just want to encourage you guys, stay alert, so reminded, be in prayer. God bless.